Hello and welcome to the Enterprise Talk Conversation Series, a peer knowledge resource by the CXOs for the CXOs. Now to our host, Kanika Goswami. Hello and welcome to our podcast on stage with Enterprise Thought Leaders. Today we have as our guest, uh, Mr. Chandra Damodaran. He's the Managing Director and the CTO of Cloud Engineering at Brilio. He leads the technology advisory and consulting group that focuses on creating business value for customers with over two, 22 years of diversified technical experience in architecting, solutioning, pre-sales and product development. Chandra started his career as a senior software engineer at Simplex Solutions post his graduation in computer science. He studied the nuances of organizational leadership and leading in a digital world. Welcome to our podcast, Chandra. It's great to have you here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, a little bit about Brilio. It was a company born digital in 2014. Uh, Brilio provides customer experience solutions, data analytics and artificial intelligence, digital infrastructure and security, and platform and product engineering. So that's the entire gamut of a digital transformation that any organization needs. Uh, the brand helps clients harness the transformative potential of the four superpowers of technology, that is the cloud, the IoT, artificial intelligence, and mobility. Um, Brilio has 17 locations across the US, Romania, Canada, Mexico, and India, and the growing global workforce of over 6,000 brilliance that blends the latest technology and design thinking with digital fluency to solve complex business problems and drive competitive differentiation for their clients. Uh, Brilio was also certified a great place to work in 2021 and 2022. Uh, is there anything you might want to add to it, Chandra? Because, uh, you know, there must be some things you would know about the company which you probably want to share with our audiences. All right. So, Kanika, thank you uh, for talking about Brilio. Um, I think it's been a pleasure, uh, you know, you know, to be part of a founding team uh, and being part of Brilio since we they we started. And I think you kind of accurately summarized, you know, looking at, the four superpowers of technology, looking at, uh, you know, focusing on solving customer problems and then using that as a lens for driving um, what we do at Brilliant today. And I think that's the message that we have continued to run, uh, you know, the eight plus years of existence that we have been. And now we are uh, doing this at a much bigger scale. And of course, also looking at uh, through the lens of industries, right? It's There's only so much that you can do around digital. But when you look at and solve these problems through the lens of the industries that we serve, you know, whether you're talking about the banking and finance, you're talking about retail, you're talking about healthcare, life sciences, you're talking about high tech, you know, this is where, you know, our emphasis now is in terms of how we're shaping uh, the firm and, you know, how we are actually, uh, you know, endearing with the customers. That's right. So uh, it is it is really appreciable, uh, uh, Chandar, because the entire concept of digital transformation is based on providing the best value for the industries and solving their problems in a manner which is like you know sustainable as well as uh, profitable for both your clients and their clients so i'm guessing that's the best way to learn uh, what solutions help and what don't so we will be talking about some interesting solutions uh, after this for instance how is the metaverse driving value for your customer experience journeys and hyper personalization Thank you, Kanika. I think this has been a, a good, uh, interesting topic for us uh, because one of the core values that we followed earlier is around customer success. And, and, and you know, across the board over the years uh, in the role that I have been playing and also as, as a firm, you know, when we are going and rising customers, one of the key things that we are seeing is every business um, has an, uh, you know, an insane amount of focus around, uh, you know, customer and customer's experiences. Uh, and what we actually translate this, right, when you break this up, it, it basically revolves around applying design thinking. It basically revolves around uh, custom user journeys, looking at personas, looking at how do you craft journeys that are meaningful for, uh, you know, eventually the end customers who are going to be using uh, some of these services, right? Whether you apply this in the context of a bank, whether you apply this in the context of a pharma, you apply it in the context of a high tech industry, so on and so forth. Um, what we are starting to see is while there are channels and mediums and, you know, different ways of engagement with customers, um, I think the whole uh, metaverse has been something, uh, you know, that took a, I would say, a significant amount of focus in the past year and a half, especially with, uh, you know, Facebook and, you know, rebranding itself as meta and kind of putting its forces around, uh, you know, the whole immersive experience has actually fundamentally shifted and also looked at a completely different segment of, uh, I would say, 
personas or users um which was always you know uh, you know probably f- just focused around in the gaming world right like if you look at gaming people you know who look at all these virtual worlds metaverses all of this has been in existence for a couple of decades right but the applicability of a 3d medium or a virtual world in the context of a uh, you know true industry or a business uh, you know whether or any of the four verticals that i talked about is where uh, i think with fb uh, you know kind of uh, facebook kind of coming in and and laying emphasis on it actually started to look you know started to make some very interesting progress so what we're starting to see um, is a completely new segment of audience and this will be all your gen alphas and your gen 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 zs right these are people who are always on the you know one on the internet and two on these virtual worlds and hence this is not a place that you will want to ignore right and any business which is meaningfully looking at elevating their experiences and also potentially finding new ways of um, you know engagements with their customers i think this is an important medium beyond your traditional channels of how you would connect right so that's where i i see metaverse as becoming a, an area of focus and a, a lot of emphasis around uh you know you know from the core regulated industries like your banking and healthcare and life sciences uh regulated industries like these to actually retail commerce and uh cpg and high tech right they all actually starting to dabble uh with uh with the metaverse so this is a channel to reckon with and i would say it has to be part of your new ways of thinking uh you know if you want to really engage with your customers right so and in addition to the metaverse physical banks and digital banking where do you see them headed in the future you see i think uh, uh, like i said right, i think if you look at um, the the customer as being the center pivot around how industries are changing or shifting right and this is across all of the different industry segments that we're starting to see i think uh, a good segue is anything that has a you know a business to a consumer model and, and that's where i start to see banking as definitely being an industry that's a lot more amenable um and and aligned to actually embrace metaverse um in fact we have been working with a couple of banks just to ensure that you know a medium of interactions with um you know with customers can actually happen through the virtual channels whether it is around you know connecting with your uh you know your banker uh and talk about different products and services or it's about um you know the services that bank offers and you know how do you how do you get let's say a customer support kind of revolve around it right so the whole theme of uh, 3d banking has started to emerge i think there are a lot of new banks that are actually getting set up which are a digital only bank um and i think when you look at a traditional bank trying to shift and engage to becoming a true digital bank and then new banks kind of coming in and disrupting uh i would say the theme revolves around being digital and then the re- digital alone is not enough but digital and immersive uh you know is where uh you know we starting to see the themes trying to come together so metaverse again becomes now um you know i would say new channel uh that will have to be embraced and i think as as good in india itself right union bank uh which is actually a very indian go- you know a government of india bank you know it it itself has its universe right so they have a metaverse based banking services so we are seeing a lot of um, movement of uh, you know the bank itself coming to you right i think keeping your customer as the center pivot so that's the motion that we are seeing uh, really kind of with, with within the banking industry yeah so as as all of this uh, you know proceeds to the next level security can be the bigger problem here even though the potential for banking in the metaverse is you know kind of intriguing so how does one build trust in the banking metaverse particularly Oh, absolutely. You know, that's a great question, uh, Kanika. Uh, I think while there are modes of engagement, right, whether it is around experience where we talk about a 3D banking or a customer support or even actually starting to offer services, right? I think um, today, um, you know, a lot of metaverse, while it focuses largely around experiences, uh, but kind of connect that, um, you know, to their own currencies, right? So there are uh virtual currencies that are out there uh there is your real currencies um you know that are out there and there are these base coins which kind of actually kind of match your fiat, fiat currencies with virtual currencies right and then there is the whole 
um, you know, interlock of all of these that kind of come together, right? It's where your Indian rupee can actually be having a digital form of the rupee, right? There is a version of a Bitcoin that can be converted into, uh, say, uh, you know, another version of a coin, right? So all of this exists today. All of this basically means um, there needs to be security at the score or at the center of how you want to do it. So there are three, pro- you know, I would say two uh, open type of challenges that we will start to encounter. And I think there are ways to address it. One is, of course, the security dimension that you brought out. Um, so the good news is um, the metaverse kind of runs on two different flavors, right? So there is an internet version uh, based, which is your centralized metaverse. And then there is your decentralized version, uh, which runs on Web3 and blockchain. So Web3 and uh, Web three and blockchain are inherently secure. You know, they, they, they have certain first principles that kind of revolves around ensuring that everything is secure, right? So if you were to embrace a Web3 blockchain-based um, approach, obviously, then you'll have to take care of certain nuances, which are, uh, you know, which will happen with any standard security protocols that you will have to apply, right? I think that's the way I see, uh, you know, the platforms basically being built and Metaverse actually plays in very well. Uh, and probably, you know, though you didn't ask this question, but something that I wanted to talk about while security is one dimension that we should think through is also the multitudes of metaverses, which I fondly call it as multiverse. And this is where, you know, it gets interesting where there are so many metaverses that are out there, some more popular than the other, either because they had a, uh, you know, a lot of the celebrities on it, or it had some of the big businesses on it, so on and so forth. So what we are starting to see is um, a model that can address both, right? So security is at the center of how the whole ecosystem is getting built. And that's where a decentralized version of metaverse probably makes more sense, you know, if you have to embrace it from a, let's say, a regulated industry like a bank. Uh, at the same time, the other side is, uh, where do I, you know, where do I see the most uh, bang for buck, you know, when I have to connect with customers, right? Um, which would be the metaverses that you will have to go for? And, you know, is there an interoperability angle that we should look for? So that's probably the second dimension, you know, that we can talk about as well. <coughs> Yeah. So, and what can customers expect from the banking metaverse in particular in the next year? And uh, what do you see as the next steps beyond, you know, what we know today to be, you know, usable? Well, absolutely. See, I think, uh, uh, like I said, so one revolves around engaging with your customers more. And and I, like, if you keep the central philosophy of saying, you know, customer is at the center of everything that we do. And for a bank, it makes more all the more um, you know, uh, imperative that, you know, they have to look at it from that uh, perspective. So what happens is, one, you're able to get your banks, and especially for some of the larger enterprise banks, you know, which are getting disrupted by these digital-only neo banks, it's important for them to keep a uh, customer at their center and offer everything that they do as banks, right, whether it's your products, whether it's your services, so on and so forth, kind of revolves around it. So what I see is a good mode of engagement is, beyond your traditional channels of, you know, using mobile banking, web banking, or, you know, let's say phone banking, so on and so forth. I think your immersive bank is your second, you know, it's your fourth dimension that I would say uh, starts to emerge. And hence, you're able to connect with uh, different types of customer personas uh, who could basically be serviced of all their banking needs, right? So that's one type of thinking that, uh, you know, you would start to see emerge a lot more mainstream as we go along. Uh, the second dimension that I would say is, you know, you touched upon this theme of security. So hence, one, you know, banks becoming digital, right, modernizing their core tech stack, and they are trying to uh, embrace cloud fully. Also, the modes of, uh, you know, how you offer these services, right? So some of the products and services that is being offered, and this is where I start to see uh, the fiat currencies, which is your regular currencies, you know, how do these start to interoperate with, I would say, the virtual currencies, right? And this is where we are starting to see a lot of movement uh, towards that. Uh, and and so to, to your point, right, I think eventually banks will be like almost like a marketplace, right, where they're not only offering customers um, products and services, but they will also become a platform where they can actually allow a lot of, uh, you know, cross uh, engagements, whether it is with other businesses or, uh, you know, for end users, so on and so forth, right? So that's the mode uh, that I eventually start to see, uh, Kanika. Well, that's interesting. But one difficulty is that the majority of nations uh, globally, actually, lack regularity 
uh, clarity on the regulations with metaverse is this a factor limiting its growth you think and are there any global examples that a regulatory framework might uh, you know help us to learn from it absolutely absolutely and and this was the the second dimension that i was talking uh, kanika when you talked about one was security the second was uh, of course this multitudes of metaverses and each of the metaverses have their own coins or their own ways of working most of them run on a specific technology stack which is probably most popular but then you could also start seeing you know differences coming in right so there is one which is multitudes of metaverses and second uh, you know the technology stack and then the underlying infrastructure so on and so forth right so all of this can potentially lead up to uh, in fact today we have n number right i think i think quite a bit of metaverses and then i gave you the differentiation of a centralized metaverse versus a decentralized version so you see a lot more um views so i think um, where we are starting to see and in fact uh, you know i'll be pleased to say that um, you know there's a metaverse standards forum where uh, a lot of big companies kind of came together uh, obviously with a microsoft uh, meta a bunch of companies kind of coming together and basically saying you know looking at this as a problem right and then saying how do we kind of mitigate this and that's where uh, the metaverse standards forum was for, you know was formed um, last year and uh, you know i'm pleased to say that you know brillio is a principal member as part of the metaverse forum uh, we are actually uh, working with the forum in trying to put together uh, you know the taxonomy and you know how the interoperability can kind of, kind of start um i think most recently we also started linux foundation uh, you know starting with its own uh, uh, open metaverse uh, you know i would say a foundation right which is to basically kind of revolves around the same philosophy of open metaverse standards uh, so i would see you know there is a big focus where everybody is interested to ensure that uh, you know everything starts to interoperate uh, interoperate right and almost becomes like the true internet that is that we have today and i think within the india context um, we have started seeing uh, you know like the bharat web 3 alliance that was announced a couple of uh, months back uh, so we are seeing a lot of industry uh, you know i mean cross industry cross geographies kind of coming together to form forum uh, standards but at the same time we are also seeing geographic specific focuses like what we are seeing in india right um, all of this is also kind of coming together kanika so i would say this would be a uh, you know a few years out but what we will start to see is the interoperability getting addressed right security will become the primary and you will have an ecosystem where we will be able to use metaverse as a medium of uh you know connections uh you know or way of doing business as well well we are, um do you think we are going to see metaverse focused privacy regulations being passed by countries and the governments uh, to address interactions and transactions happening in the metaverse anytime soon um that's a interesting question kanika um i i think i would say there are um you know i would say some kind of forums and councils and strategies being set up um i don't think uh, like internet right which is uh, you know probably not governed and you know maybe there are certain countries that do but not most of it i would say there will be some kind of guidelines that will start to emerge and and i think this is where i'm i'm saying right i think some of the things around whether around the interoperability should it be approached right like for example upi has been a great example of what uh, india provided when it came to payments and payment integrations for example right now can upi be the global norm for example um, for let's say payment integrations i think that's the model that we are seeing you know something that will iterate so to your question i would say there is definitely a lot of task force being set up some of the uh, you know groups coming together uh, and i think there are some of the formulations that are coming in uh, but it will take us some time before uh, you know we start seeing this becoming uh, you know truly mainstream right just from a regulations perspective kind of thing right uh, chandar i have one more question and that is out of sheer curiosity of the discussion we just had we keep talking about the metaverse we keep talking about digital transformation and all the technologies and all the uh, change management and the you know various kinds of management platforms that go into it but as a technologist yourself and been in the in, in the industry and watched digital transformation very closely which technology do you think will actually carry it forward the best i mean not not because organizations feel the need to you know adopt artificial intelligence for various uh, processes or adopt automation which do you think actually uh, you know really sets the pace really really works for a company that wants to transform itself and be a you know all digital organization 
so I think it's an interesting uh, question, Kanika, and I, and I think I have to have a, a slightly more philosophical angle to how I would want to answer this. I would say absolutely fine. That would be really nice coming from you. <laughs> So I, I would say, uh, see, uh, you know, technology, there is so much of, uh, you know, technologies that keeps spurting up every other day, right? I think um, if we go into the technology ecosystem itself directly, uh, you know, it would almost be like chasing a tail, right? So there are so many new and every day is something new that is coming in and it kind of keeps us on the toes, which is good. But at the same time, I think the, the you know, from the years of experience that I've had and in another way, uh, you know, definitely I obviously engage with my customers. Uh, and I think a brilliant way of working, right, I think is to actually look at the business problem. And this is where when I was talking about the industry lens, uh, it becomes pertinent to kind of think through on, you know, what are we trying to solve, right? And are there solutions and approaches that we should be embracing? And then look at which of the technologies would be the best fit, right? And not get dogmatic about technology. So I think if we take that lens and I would say, for example, metaverse, you know, I would not want to force fit. But at the same time, I would say if I'm looking at a segment of audiences, right, which is my personas that I talked about, whether it's my Gen Zs or it's my Gen Alphas, I would want to engage with with them, um, you know, for the industries that I serve. And hence, it becomes an important dimension of driving greater experience. And obviously not to mention just experiences, right? But it's also a completely net new a customer base that we would probably acquire. And hence, a metaverse as a technology makes makes the right choice. And, you know, should it be on a decentralized version, so on and so forth, can be the technology nuances that can kick in, right? But I think more and more, uh, if I have to drive through experiences, it has to be about how endeared are we with the customers, right? Which means our ability to use data, right? Our ability to actually drive, in, including, you know, some of our decisioning processes has to revolve. Right? That's where I see uh, 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 the theme of experience and then the theme of decisioning kind of coming together with digital. And when you kind of combine all of these things together, you know, you start to have, uh, you know, any of these industries that I was talking through, right? Or the companies that can be within these industries, have a very focused approach in terms of how they engage with customers, how they are able to provide value-added services to their customers, and at the same time, have a very nimble and a tight footprint, right? I think that's probably the approach um, that's most pragmatic, uh, and especially in a world, right, where we are facing a lot of headwinds. I think it makes the most sense in terms of saying, you know, how do I get most out of uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, investments that I can make, right? I think it's do more with less. I think that's the theme that we should uh, keep evolving, uh, Kanika. Very interesting insight. And you said, as you said, part technology, part philosophy, and that is why it is interesting. So, <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Chandra, for your time today and a really interesting discussion. I hope we get to do this again uh, sometime. Um, I am really grateful for the time that you've given to us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think it was a pleasure talking to you as well. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us. Please do follow us on social media for regular updates and new content.